Today is uh, the 22nd of May, which was recognized by Congress uh, back in 1933 uh, to be the National Maritime Day. And since 1933, we've been celebrating uh, National Maritime Day. Originally, it was uh, designed to commemorate the uh, 1819 voyage of the, the first steamship Savannah uh, to cross uh, the Atlantic. And the interesting part about that is it didn't go all the way across on steam. It actually went a short way and then sailed the rest of the way because it was a combination sail and steam. Uh, but that voyage itself is actually the namesake for the nuclear ship Savannah, which was part of the Eisenhower Adams for Peace program, uh, which is sitting right here at the pier. And so later on this afternoon, we're going to have a, a remembrance event, uh, primarily to remember Maritime Day, but uh, over time, it's actually grown in to be a recognition of the maritime industry uh, and the mariners uh, who support not only our economic security but also our national security. I think the real important aspect of this is we are and will always be a maritime nation. And our maritime roots are really what established us as a nation. All of our power and influence came from our ability. Believe it or not, in, eight, in 1789, the first Congress of the United States recognized the importance of the maritime industry and they actually passed legislation. It was a tax reform that actually said and they incentivized building ships in the United States to carry all of our exports and all of our imports. And so essentially if you built a ship in the United States, you did not have to pay taxes, which was a huge benefit. So of course the shipbuilding industry grew like crazy. Today, the shipbuilding industry uh, supports 110,000 jobs all across the country, 28 states, uh, and in many states, uh, that is the largest industry in the entire state. Uh, and the indirect jobs, so those are the jobs that support the supply chain, they actually support about 400,000 jobs. It's a $37 billion industry, and it really produces about $26 billion in revenue. So it was it's important back in 1789, as it is in 2016, but one of the reasons why we're really here is to talk about the Mariners. The Mariners themselves are really uh, the lifeblood and they are the ones that sailed these ships into harm's way and supported our troops in World War I and World War II, in the Korean and the Vietnam War, and they did it again uh, in the Gulf War, both in Afghanistan and Iraq. And those Mariners, uh, if you think about what they uh, endured and the weather, uh, and the various threats that were out there, uh, it was pretty significant what they've done to go for literally months at a time to be able to support our troops. And uh, had we not had the U.S. Merchant Marine Fleet uh, in all of the wars that we have fought, uh, we would not have been able to project our power, to project our armed forces, to be able to put them into harm's way, and then to be able to sustain them when we want there. So they really are the difference in what has made our, our nation great. But even today, and we're not even talking about wars, we're talking about the ability to support humanitarian crises, whether it's earthquakes or hurricanes or whatever calamity is there. We've had ships that have carried supplies to Liberia to support the Ebola uh, virus uh, crisis we had a year ago. So if you think about it, uh, our mariners really do so much more. There's a lot of people that don't remember that after 9-11, uh, the greatest mass maritime evacuation in our entire history was getting those per people off the island of Manhattan because there was no way to get off the island. Uh, and literally all manner of uh, vessels, whether they were ferries or tugs or just other craft, they literally uh, evacuated hundreds of thousands of folks that were actually working there on 9-11 and who were trying to escape the chaos and and all of the debris that uh, as the World Trade Center came down and so that was very that was, that was a very large event and a lot of people forget it but going back to the first question that you asked we'd like to make sure that folks understand how important the maritime industry is to us as a nation and we're gonna have to get back to it uh, eventually I mean we're gonna go it's sort of like the movie Back to the Future uh, maritime is going to become great again because we have no choice in that and the reason I say that is currently today we have a population of about 320 million people. In 30 years we're going to grow by about 70 to 80 million, so we're going to have 400 million people living in the United States. And that's going to require us to carry 45 percent more freight domestically. And 90 percent of everything that comes in the United States or leaves the United States today goes through a port. 
Uh, so if you want something 30 years from now, uh, I mean, think about how congested our roadways are and how congested, you know, the railways and uh, water is going to become more and more important. And we have one strategic national advantage that no other nation in the world has, and that's that we got 25,000 miles of coastline and inland rivers and waterways that we can put all manner of watercraft and barges and ships to be able to help support uh, that challenge. And so we're going to get back to our maritime roots. It's just a matter of time.